Christ is mediator of a new covenant, so that by means of his death, those who are called may receive the promise of an eternal inheritance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these days. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly at those who place their hope in your mercy, that are cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living and be made full heirs of your promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham prostrated himself, God spoke to him, My covenant with you is this, you are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall, be called, shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you. Throughout the ages as an everlasting pact. To be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now standing, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remember his covenant forever. You, descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into Abraham by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, 
of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I say, if I should say that I do not know him, I will be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it, and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, Before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are all social people. We all like to be social beings. We like to be, like to be people that get along with everyone else. We have conversations with people, with strangers, with acquaintances, with people that we know well, or people that we don't know well, people that we've just met, or people that we have had conversations with for over 10, 20 years. And then again, we always like to get along with everyone. We always like to just be kind and cordial and compassionate to all those people that we know. And that usually is the case for most of us, except when they say something that we don't like. When they say something that, regardless of how true it may be, if it doesn't go along with what I feel, with what I want, with what is convenient to me, then immediately there's a fight. Immediately there is resistance. Immediately there's something that puts me in a, some sort of difficult situation with whoever this person or group of persons might be. And that is something similar to what is happening to Jesus and the Jews that he's speaking with. He comes and gives them the truth. He comes and gives them the reality of who he is and who God is when it comes to him and when it comes to the rest of the people. But because it doesn't go along with what they think to be true or with what they want to be true, then immediately there's resistance. Immediately they start criticizing him, they start chastising him, they start telling him that he's a possessed person because he's not going along or not saying the things that they want to hear. And that happens a lot, especially to us, especially nowadays, especially now in our world where our individual ideologies are what is our driving force, what is our motivation, what is the thing that we hold on to. And even if it's a priest, even if it's a lay person, even if it's someone in some sort of authority position, comes to us and tells us something that is true, but still the opposite of what I want, of what I believe, then I don't believe you. Then your word has no meaning to me then your word is not something that I am going to listen to because it goes against what I believe, regardless of if, if it is true or not. But then again, the question has to come to us. Or well, we have to make ourselves this question. Are we really truth seekers? Are we really trying to find the truth of the faith, the truth of the world, the truth of morality? of integrity, of justice? Or are we only seeking to find truth in the things that we believe, in the things that we want to be true above anything else? Because again, there are a lot of people who might come to us with words of wisdom, of truth. But if it is something that is contrary to what I do on a regular basis, if it's something that is contrary to what I believe and do on a regular basis, then I immediately just shut my ears and shut you up because it's not what I want. If someone comes and tells you that cheating in your job and lying constantly is not a good thing, then you immediately shut them up because it's not what I want. It's not what I want to hear because it's something that I do often. When someone comes and tells us that pornography and masturbation is not a normal thing, it's not something that everyone does. It's not something that everyone should be doing. I don't listen to them because it's not something that I want to hear. If someone tells us that abortion is evil and it is the killing of an innocent person inside the mother's womb because it's not something that I believe in but that I want to 
hold as something, as an ideology in my life, then I immediately shut them up. If someone that tells us that coming to Mass, whenever it was possible to come to Mass, that is something that is vital to our spiritual life, we say, no, that's meaningful, because it's not something that caters to my life. All these are truths. All these are things that are part of our morality, of what I believe as Christians, as Catholics, as people of this world, of the dignity of life, of the dignity of the sacraments, of us following and being close to Jesus as something that nourishes us, that strengthens us every single day. But for a lot of people, for a lot of us, if it doesn't go along with what I envision for my life, for my world, for my society, for my community, they immediately shut it up, regardless of how true it may be. So again, the question for us, are we actually seeking truth? Are we actually seeking to find the truth of God on, in this world? Or am I just trying to see the things that I want to see? Especially today, let us ask the Lord to give us that grace, to see things the way that He sees them, to see the truth in the world that only tries to spew lies to us. And especially, let us ask Him for the courage to make sure that that truth is maintained firm first in our hearts, and that through that, we can make it known to the world that lives in darkness. Trusting in God's providence, as Abraham did, our father in faith, we offer our prayers to the Lord for the needs of the whole world. That Christ may continue to strengthen the faith of the church leaders in their work of witness to the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are elected to lead nations and peoples may be guided by the just hand of God in all their decision making, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may give comfort to those who struggle with chronic illness or pain, and especially for all those affected by the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Lenten practices may be inspired by Jesus' own prayer and fasting, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For that God may bless our faithful departed and grant them eternal rest with Him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And especially today for Kay Vignini and for John Pirelesi, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of covenants, old and new, hear our prayer and grant all that we need. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these sacrificial offerings 
that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received the heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of us who cannot receive communion at this time, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Be gracious to your people, Lord, we pray, that as from day to day they reject what does not please you, they may be filled instead with delight at your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer to the Virgin Mary for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. 
At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will, and to do what Jesus tells us, He who took our sufferings upon Himself, and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. A prayer in time of need. Loving Father, our life and our hope, come to our aid in this difficult and uncertain time. Look with mercy on all who suffer from the coronavirus. Bless them and their families with your healing, consolation, and peace. Guide and be with all who care for them. Give wisdom and insight to those working to stop the spread of this disease and help them find a way to cure it. Console our anxious hearts, strengthen our faith, and give us the grace to trust in your goodness. Restore communities affected by the virus to wholeness and health, and in your loving mercy, give your help and protection to all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 